if you don't know me, my name is Matt Calger, uh, one of the track leads for the experiments track. Uh, as Dr. Max said in all the other sessions in this in this room, uh, if there's something you do like about this track and you want more of, let me know after. If there's something you don't like, let me know after. This session is particularly near and dear to my heart. The first uh, first about five years I spent as a sysadmin was writing monitoring tools, which was a painful and thankless process, uh, which I'm sure that Kurt probably mostly agrees with. It is thankless, but we get to thank him by making him talk about it for half an hour on stage. Cool? All right. Thanks, Kurt. Very good. So what we're going to be talking about is uh, CF top, and if you don't know what that is, uh, that's what, uh, what we'll show and we'll uh, demo along the way here. So a little bit about me, uh, I'm a uh, cloud architect with uh, ECS team, which is now part of CGI. Uh, I'm a cloud native developer and wear a variety of hats, but uh, for at least the next 30 minutes, the, uh, the most important one is that uh, I am the uh, author of CF top that uh, we're going to be uh, talking about. Um, so the first part um, to understand is why I created it initially. Uh, and the reason for this is that we were engaged with a client uh, in a production support capacity to be able to look at uh, a Cloud Foundry installation that was running production applications and provide feedback to the client about uh, if things were optimized appropriately, uh, if any of the applications that were running on the platform were having issues. And what I quickly dis discovered is that I was flying a bit blind, which is to say that they had a syslog nozzle that was uh, capturing uh, log events from the uh, fire hose, but they weren't actually capturing uh, container or platform metrics at all. The only thing that they were capturing is the application logs, uh, so standard out, standard air, and it was going to Splunk. Uh, the other thing that they had installed was the JMX, uh, metric, uh, the JMX uh, bridge. So they were using App Dynamics to be able to query through JMX uh, the stats, and they were providing some somewhat rudimentary dashboarding. So you could see some information about what was going on in the platform, but it wasn't enough to answer some basic questions, such as uh, what application is taking the most traffic at this very moment. Uh, how much CPU is this application consuming at this very moment? Um, and those were the things that I wanted to figure out and, and know. And so I kind of looked around to see, is there anything that can provide me that with a low friction for installation and usage? Which is to say that I didn't want to have something that you had to actually install on the platform. And the reason for that is that I'm dealing with a production platform, and to be able to install yet another application in production um, can cause problems because you actually uh, need to go through change control requests and figure out, um, you know, is this uh, is this an allowable application to deploy and so forth. So what I kind of realized is what I wanted is something as simple as uh, the application that you're probably all familiar with uh, in the Unix world, which is the top command, the Unix top command. You run Unix top pretty much uh, if you're on you know, Linux or you know, HPUX, AIX. Um, you run top and you pretty much get what you would expect, which is uh, CPU utilization, memory consumption, and a bunch of other stats. It's very simple and you know, it's a low barrier entry. It's usually already there, and if not, it's easy to install. So that's kind of what I was looking for uh, in, in some mechanism. And since I didn't find it, that's, uh, that's why I wrote uh, CF top. So what it is uh, is a plugin into the CF command line. So if you're not familiar with plugins, CF, of course, is the main command line tool that you would do, like, for instance, CF push. Uh, so all applications developers would be familiar with that. And um, admins, uh, platform operators would be familiar with this as well. So uh, what Pivotal or uh, Cloud Foundry has done is uh, uh, provide the ability to extend the set of commands that you can run um, such as, you know, you can do your CF push, you can create orgs, you can create spaces, and you can scale your application. Those are all built-in commands. And you can write, uh, as a developer, uh, additional commands that augment the, uh, the CF command line with uh, additional functionality. And so in this particular case, uh, I wrote a uh, plugin called top uh, that extends it with a new command called top. Uh, and uh, 
the way that you would uh, go ahead and uh, install that, if you're not familiar with plugins, is going to that URL, plugins.cloudfounder.org. That actually uh, goes to a website that provides you uh, a list of all of the plugins that you can install. Um, so these are all augmented things from the command line. And uh, the one that we're specifically talking about here is this uh, CF top. Uh, installation instructions are on all of these guys. So literally, it's just uh, doing CF install plugin uh, and following that uh, guy right there, and you're good to go. So what uh, we're going to do here is um, go through uh, and demo what it actually does. And we're going to talk through um, the various components here. And what I encourage you to do is ask questions along the way. I uh, kind of intend this to be interactive. Otherwise, uh, I think you and I will both get uh, bored. So uh, in this particular case, if I uh, type in CF plugins, and I probably need to uh, stop this in order for you to see what I'm doing. So if I do CF plugins, what you can see is um, all the plugins that I have installed, and specifically the, uh, the one we're uh, looking at here is the uh, top plugin. So I'm going to run CF top. And I'm already targeted. I'm already logged in. And what this is doing is this is providing me information about this particular uh, foundation installation. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the, uh, the header, the, the components at the top, and then start walking through uh, some of the, uh, the information that's down below. So the information uh, on the header here, first uh, item you see at the top left here is the events section. Uh, on the events section, um, what that's actually showing you is the number of events that are, uh, have been seen on the, uh, 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 on the, uh, the, the traffic controller, the, uh, the, the logger gator, um, the fire hose is uh, what you're really seeing there. So in this particular case, we've got about 400 events a second going through the fire hose. And how it knows that is this has uh, initialized two nozzles against the fire hose. Uh, to be able to actually receive all of those events and to be able to report on them and, and display information uh, against that information. So this, uh, th this guy here, the events, is counting how many events since CF Top has been started uh, that has been seen. So in this case, uh, since we started it uh, one minute and 20 seconds ago, we've seen 41,000 events on that uh, fire hose. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to actually start this again. The second thing I wanted to uh, make note of here is this warm-up period. And this is a countdown uh, of 60 seconds. And what is happening here is that CF Top is intended to be as friendly as possible to the foundation in which it's monitoring. So there's no polling going on uh, to figure out, hey, what's going on in your platform? This is literally just passively listening to the events that are happening on that fire hose and aggregating a bunch of stats together and being able to display what is actually going on. Um, so uh, in order for you to get an accurate picture of all of the information, it takes about 60 seconds, which is to say like container events, as an example, uh, output their information per container once every 30 seconds. Uh, there's information that happens on the uh, Diego cells, and those actually only come out once every 60 seconds, which is the reason that we have uh, a 60-second uh, warm-up period. After that six, 60 seconds, all of the information that you see here now should be a, an accurate picture of what an environment looks like. So if we continue to, uh, to look at here, uh, the next section here, uh, outside of where we're targeted and who we're logged in as, is the, uh, the stack in which... Um, the Diego cells uh, that have been reported in uh, belong. So in this case, we have three Diego cells that are of type CF Linux uh, FS2, uh, which is the, the default um, stack. And information about, this is aggregated information about all of those cells. So we have CPU utilization. This is the CPU utilization cumulatively across all three of those cells. Um, we have what the maximum CPU is, CPU is, and the reason that that number might look a little strange is in how do you get 1,200%. Well, so how that works is very similar if you're familiar with Linux, and if you've ever done a top on Linux when you have a multi-threaded application, you can actually have more than 100% CPU utilization. Uh, similar here is what it's doing is determining how many CPUs are in each Diego cell. 
uh, and then timing those out by how many Diego cells you have. And in this particular case, we end up with uh, 1,200 because each uh, Diego cell has four CPUs. So four times three, we end up with 1,200% uh, as a maximum if you maxed out all Diego cells uh, in this particular stack. Um, we then have uh, memory information about how much uh, memory is used, uh, how much memory is available on uh, these Diego cells, how much is reserved. Reserved is when you push an application, it has a uh, quota, and that quota basically decrements, if you will, how much is reserved within a Diego cell. And then again, in this particular case, when the header information, we're uh, adding that all together and uh, determining how much is fully reserved within uh, the three Diego cells we have here. In this particular case, we have 129 applications deployed to these three Diego cells. Um, this is not containers. That's what this 134 is, which is to say that we have 129 unique applications, as in like CF push, the name of an application. Um, some of those applications have been scaled to more than one, which is how we end up with more containers, um, which is typical. You would never have more, less containers than you do have applications, which isn't actually quite true, um, which is to say that you could have applications that are pushed to Cloud Foundry that aren't started. So if you actually look at this and say, oh, well, uh, for some reason, if you had uh, 129 applications, but uh, only 120 containers as an example, that's actually legal um, because maybe you're, some of your containers uh, or some of your applications are stopped or that they're started but crashing. So that's how those uh, numbers can, uh, can play out there. Uh, and disk uh, is similar in memory of uh, how much is uh, used, the maximum amount of uh, disk space you have available and reserved. Uh, the, the next stack, it will just list out all of the stacks that are available to you in this particular case. This foundation that I'm looking at has a, uh, a Windows cell in it as well. So um, that's listed here. This is also aware of uh, isolation segments, uh, if you're familiar with those. And if you have isolation segments, those will be listed here as well. So that way it groups together uh, all of the Diego cells by stack by isolation segment because you could actually have an isolation segment A that actually has multiple stacks in it. Um, so all of that information is uh, sort of broken down but aggregated uh, by that particular type. Um, I'll go over the, uh, the, the pieces here on the alerts. So hopefully uh, if you're monitoring your platform, you actually don't have any uh, alerts or, uh, or warnings. Uh, but in this particular case, uh, I have an application that is not in the desired state. Uh, I put, to try to help, uh, people understand what this really meant is that this is the DCR is the desired container uh, count and the uh, RCR is the actual reporting container count, which is to say that I wanted some number and the number that I've got is not, does not match. So in this particular case, I have a crashing app uh, in here and we'll look at that here in a, in a second, but that means that um, I wanted in this particular case, I wanted uh, one instance of this particular application, but because it keeps crashing and is not able to start, um, I've got zero. So it's warning you that you have, in this particular case, one application that uh, is not meeting uh, what you want it to, uh, to, to run on. Uh, and then the next thing is a warning, um, because this is now part of Cloud Foundry self-healing, is that I have uh, 33 containers that have crashed uh, in the last 24 hours. Uh, three of them, uh, in the last hour. So in this particular case, this application, as long as it's not also the application that's not in the desired state, uh, is running, um, but, uh, but it keeps crashing. So this may be uh, an indication that uh, there's something, uh, something going on. Actually, it is an indication something's going wrong. And you can actually look at the information uh, that we'll look at in a sec to figure out why an application might be crashing. So then, um, actually, let me take a pause there before I get into the, uh, the details of the application list down below. Um, do we have any questions uh, at this point? Uh, it looks like it says admin at the top. If I'm not an admin on a foundation, can I still use the tool? Yes. Um, so there's a, a couple of uh, different parts to that question. Um, one is that I am actually logged in as admin, so obviously I have full uh, authority to do anything. Um, but CFTOP actually has two permissions that it needs. Um, one is the cloud controller admin, and the other one is the firehose uh, uh, permission. You can assign those permissions to any user, so obviously you'd want to assign them to a user that is appropriate, because obviously at that point they could see everything that's in the firehose, 
which includes any application logging. And if people are uh, logging some sensitive information, you know, that, that could be bad uh, if you just gave this out to everybody. Um, so those are the two permissions you need uh, to run this in what I call privileged mode, so in the mode that you're seeing right now. Um, you can actually run this without those permissions, meaning in a non-privileged mode, and if you're just an, a developer that is not going to get those two permissions, um, it runs in reduced functionality mode, which is to say that you only have the ability to see, obviously, the applications, meaning the orgs and spaces and the applications in those orgs and spaces that you have permissions to see. And the other thing is because I can't initialize a firehose connection to Cloud Foundry because you don't have that permission, uh, it actually initializes an independent web socket for every application that you can see. And I put a cap of it uh, at 50, which is to say that uh, it will show you the first 50, which when I say first, the oldest 50 applications that have been deployed to the platform that you have uh, authority to, uh, to see. So, um, so, and then there's some other functionality that I'm going to talk about uh, later that uh, you won't have uh, the ability to see, such as the header information um, will not obviously be able to show you all of the aggregated uh, cells because you don't have the level of uh, information as a regular developer to see that. So it does work, just works in a reduced functionality mode uh, as a developer. Any other questions at this point? All right. So let's go down then uh, to the, uh, the section down below, which is uh, a list of all of the applications. And again, since I'm logged in as admin, this is all of the applications on the left-hand side here uh, that are running on this platform. So this should be 129 applications, actually 130 because of the, uh, the Windows guy as well. Um, and so what we're seeing is the application name and of course the Oregon space in which it's deployed to. DCR was the uh, desired container count. This is how much it's scaled to. So if, in other words, if you've scaled your application to five instances, DCR would be five, meaning that's the desired, that's how many you want. Uh, RCR is how many are actually reporting in. Hopefully those two numbers match. Uh, if they don't match, that's generally why you would get the red alert banner is that saying that something is not working. It couldn't start it or it crashed. And it's currently in that state, meaning that um, it hasn't re recovered that container yet. Um, the next piece, which is the uh, default sort when you bring up uh, CF top, which is the uh, CPU utilization. So right now we're doing a descending sort uh, on CPU percent. Uh, and so what this is, is the percentage of CPU that's consumed by all instances of that application. So, so again, let's, uh, let's actually look at this. So my very top application here is the uh, test app 001. If you look at this, we got a DCR of four, meaning we have four instances of that thing currently scaled. We actually have four reporting in, four containers reporting in. Aggregated together, all four of those uh, are consuming 1.7% of the CPU in the Diego cell um, or cells uh, that are within the stack um, and isolation segment, if you had it, um, of, where, of where it's deployed. So in this particular case, it's a, uh, it's a, a Linux default um, stack. So it's actually the top guy. So part of this 9.3% uh, that we see at the top um, is uh, part of that number is this 1.84% that uh, this particular guy is consuming. Uh, cont uh, continuing on the right here, the CR, uh, CRH is the crash count. This is what this uh, guy is reporting in. It says that uh, somewhere in this list, we've got 34 uh, crashed containers in over the last 24 hours. Uh, but we can see that this particular uh, application has not crashed, at least not in the last 24 hours. The next one is uh, memory used. Uh, and again, depends, uh, I mean, this is how much memory is used in that, um, that container. Um, so whatever it's using, if it's Java or Node or whatever, uh, that's just how much memory has consumed. Um, not necessarily, obviously, your quota. Uh, same thing with disk is how much disk is used. Uh, I'm actually using my right uh, arrow here to go through uh, additional fields that are available. The next one is the uh, response time of this particular application. Um, the reason that some of these have dash dash is that that number is the response time for that application, at least one of the containers in that application, in the last 60 seconds. So if a dash dash means it's got no traffic in the last 60 seconds, if I kind of keep going to the right here for a sec, um, in this particular case, um, 
hopping all the way over to the req slash one. That is the requests per one second, which in this particular case, I'm throwing a load test at this at 50 uh, requests a second. So I've got a, uh, another, uh, another command prompt that's actually hitting this application with a, uh, a get request um, 50 times a second, just so I can put some traffic on here. So uh, those 50 requests a second, um, each, each individual request is averaging at about 2.3 milliseconds per, per call. So again, this can be a useful tool if you're getting reports that, hey, uh, I'm getting really slow response time. Um, nice thing to fire this up and take a look. Now, in this particular case, you might want to get a baseline just figuring out what, uh, what, what is normal. So in, in other words, if you have an application that uh, normally responds, uh, has a 15 second response time, um, is that good or bad? Well, I don't know, I mean, it, it depends whether that's uh, it's kind of your normal baseline. Which is something I want to bring up uh, real quickly is that this does not, meaning CF top, does not replace uh, Historic monitoring tools, which is to say if you're going to, uh, to Splunk or you're using uh, uh, Grafana or uh, a number of other monitoring tools because all of those have history, meaning that they're actually uh, capturing all of the uh, information from a platform and you can go back in time and actually look at what's going on. CFTOP is not intended to do that, which is to say that there is no history here, meaning if I exit CFTOP and bring it back up, all of these stats go back to zero and it's from the time you start CFTOP with the exception of the crash count. That's the only one that actually has uh, history, if you will, in the last 24 hours. Um, just going through this uh, quickly here, uh, the slash 10 is the last 10 seconds, how many requests have occurred in the last 10 seconds, and slash 60 is how many have occurred in the last 60 seconds. This is the total request count, again, since CFTOP has started. So since we've been running CFTOP now for 14 minutes, we've gotten 42,000 calls on this particular application. Um, this then breaks it down by HTTP response code. Um, uh, so in this particular case, they've all been successful. 2XX meaning that uh, it's returned 200 or somewhere in the 200 range. Um, this again is a nice way to be able to determine if any of your applications are exhibiting a problem because hopefully if your applications are, uh, are, are behaving well, you should not have any 500 errors. Um, but this, again, this is a, a way to, uh, to see uh, quickly if any of your applications are uh, producing um, 500 errors or 404s or whatever. Um, the uh, isolation segment uh, that is uh, assigned to this, the dash dash means it's the default uh, isolation segment, often called the uh, shared isolation segment. Uh, and then going all the way to the right is the, uh, the stack. Um, so let me pause there for a sec before we dive in uh, any further. Uh, any, any questions? We've got a mic that's coming around here. Uh, what does the, on the application, what does the blue uh, represent? So the blue represents um, uh, traffic that has occurred in the last uh, 20 seconds, I believe. Um, so basically it's recent traffic. And again, the important part here is it is traffic that has gone through the Go router. Um, and the reason I, I say that is that um, if you happen to have container to container uh, communication, meaning that uh, maybe you're using a Eureka or something that actually is talking directly container to container, um, that traffic is not visible from the Firehose perspective because it didn't go through the Go router, in which case it may look like you have an application that's taking CPU and it's not, bl you know, it's not blue there and it, this is not counting any, uh, any request counts. And you're like, well, why, what's it doing? Well, it, it could very well be busy. It just has not uh, gone through the Go router and therefore it doesn't know about it. Uh, do you do you have any kind of batch modes for this? Like uh, in ESX top, how you could do a batch mode for more analysis capturing for testing? I do not. Okay. Not at this time. But feel free. Uh, this is all open source, by the way. Um, so again, if you just go out to, uh, to the plugins.cloudfounder.org, you can install it. And in that same section where you install uh, on that web page, there is a link to uh, the GitHub repository uh, for this guy. Uh, that would take you to the uh, GitHub repository for CFTOP, and then uh, you could actually log a, uh, an issue uh, for a feature request uh, if you want to uh, kind of explain your use case. So I you know, encourage any of you, uh, if you've used this before and um, it doesn't quite do what you want it to do, feel free to, uh, to add some, uh, some feature requests and uh, we can talk about that. 
All right, so the next thing we could do is actually delve deeper. So remember, I'm, I'm focusing on, on this uh, test app 001. Remember, there are four instances of this application, meaning there are four containers. If we drive into that one, we get a little more detail about that particular application. So in this, in this case, we have the four. And remember, I was saying there was like one point some percent, one point eight percent of CPU. You can now see how that actually breaks down uh, into each container uh, as to how much CPU it's, it's taking. The other thing that this shows you, which um, is possible to get through forensic analysis, um, but sometimes challenging, is well, what Diego cell is actually hosting this. And the reason you might want to know that is, well, what other things that might be running on that Diego cell? Um, and we'll get into that uh, here in just a second. But that's what the, uh, the cell IP address is on the right, is uh, what Diego cell is actually running this particular application. And if you recall, we have three Diego cells that are in the CF uh, Linux stack. And so that's the reason you end up seeing two that are hosted on dot .66, because of course we have four instances, but we only have three Diego cells. So of course one of the Diego cells had to have two. Um, and then the information here is self-explanatory uh, breakdown of each container and uh, how much uh, uh, memory and, and disk it's using. The only thing to, uh, to note here is the um, uh, and we kind of skipped over it on the other, uh, the other uh, page, is the standard out and standard error. These are how many, obviously, logging events have occurred from that container. If I go back a screen, that same information aggregated is on this screen, uh, standard out, standard error. It's just the aggregated. Where this is useful from a use case perspective is if you are dropping uh, a lot of log messages, and you're like, I don't know what's going on here, it, Maybe that uh, an application went to an environment, prod would be a, an environment that we were dealing with, that had debug, or worse yet, trace level turned on, um, usually by accident. Somebody checked in a uh, you know, log4j or some kind of configuration file accidentally, and all of a sudden now production is logging lots and lots of output. And so obviously if you're logging this stuff to Splunk, if somebody's paying attention, they could do a query and say, oh, wow, there's, uh, there's a lot of logging going on in this one particular application. Um, but somebody would either have to have a query that's running all the time and some kind of schedule, or they'd have to kind of pay, be paying attention. Where in this particular case, it's really easy to identify the offending application and say, oops, somebody messed up. Um, or maybe they didn't mess up. Maybe you're actually doing a load test. But again, maybe it's a load test in a load test environment that somebody just, you know, forgot to turn off debug, and that's affecting your actual uh, your output for your uh, load test. So that may be uh, an indicator that uh, you want to do something. Um, so let's see, what else we got here? A lot of these things are self-explanatory. We got the HTB uh, rate here, which is the uh, same as the uh, prior screen, is how many uh, are occurring per second, per 10 seconds, per 60 seconds. The response time averages uh, across that same thing, so 2.1.8 you know, uh, milliseconds. Uh, on the right side, that's how many crashes have occurred in those time intervals. And the bottom are the uh, particular containers um, that uh, are going on there. Um, so the next thing that we can actually look at is drive a little bit deeper. And one is getting general uh, information about this application. So in this particular case, the application has, and sometimes it's useful to actually get the application uh, ID, it's GUID, it's org and space you would, would have already known. Uh, in this case, we're in the isolation segment shared. Um, what build pack it was built with. In this case, this thing was built with the, uh, st or, uh, deployed with the uh, static build pack. And, uh, and when, that, uh, when the deployment actually occurred and what its actual reserved uh, or quotas were uh, was at the bottom here. Uh, if this was a uh, Docker image, uh, the build pack would be replaced with Docker, uh, Docker information, such as where the Docker image came from. Uh, the next thing is a view crash count. In this particular case, since this one hasn't crashed, there's nothing there interesting to look at. Um, and then the next one is uh, HTTP response code. Uh, again, this one's not particularly interesting uh, because all of my requests here are doing get. Um, so actually, let me uh, pick a different application. It might be mildly more interesting. Uh, maybe the Eureka guy. So in this case, this one's doing a, both a get and a uh, put. 
Um, fortunately, they're all getting 200 as response codes, but uh, again, if you're, if you're a developer, particularly, and trying to figure out what is going on, you can start drilling down and say, if you looked at the summary screen, it just said like 5XX as an example. So it's like, all right, well, you know you're getting some kind of a 500-ish return code, um, but you don't know specifically, was it a 505, was it, you know, um, or even the 400, uh, you know, are yeah, you getting any uh, 404, 403? So this one actually tells you specifically uh, what the response code was, how many times that response code has occurred. So in this case, uh, we have 132 uh, get um, methods calls with a response code of 200, and when that last um, what last occurred, uh, and then the uh, the last response time uh, again in milliseconds. Um, and then if we Drive down to find our, let's go this way, our crashed app. This is the one that keeps crashing. So um, this one provides you a little more information. Again, all I'm doing is uh, in the details of this application. Um, the very bottom of the screen, just from a helpful hint perspective, these are not all of the commands at the very bottom. So when we see uh, X for exit, D for display, uh, order, filter, those are not all of the things you can do. These are just sort of the quick tips saying, ah, these are the most common things people do. Um, if you type H on any of these screens, this gives you a laborious detail about every single field that's on here, what it means, how it's derived, and then down below is um, all of the um, shortcuts and commands that you can actually type. So I'd encourage you, if you're going to use this, uh, go ahead and explore. There's lots of hidden nuggets in there. Um, so going back then to the crash count, this gives you um, when the last time this application crashed. Um, the index is the the container index number. Um, so in this particular case, I think this thing is only scaled to one, meaning it only has index zero, so the, hence they're all zero. Um, but you can actually see if the problem is in a particular container or if it's like moving around. And then the other thing is the, re, uh, the response or the, the return code from the application. Now in this case, this particular application we're looking at is a app called misbehaving app that I'm specifically returning 66 out of this app, hence why it's 66. Realistically, when you get crashed apps, it's likely that it's returning you something else, that you're not doing it. And so um, I, in the help, uh, if you type H, help, um, I provided a little bit of uh, information as to what response codes could mean. Um, and really, the, the main guys, uh, at least from a Java perspective, um, other obviously, uh, you know, when we talk about Node and other build packs, uh, maybe uh, likely will be different. But in the case of Java, these three return codes, so 137, 143, 255, um, are the most common ones that you would get a, uh, an out of, uh, out of memory uh, uh, case. So if you're actually getting those uh, back to here, where it would say uh, exited with status code blah, one of those, um, chances are your application is running out of memory, meaning your quota is too small. Or you got a memory leak or something to that effect. Um, I could probably go on and on, but I think uh, my time is actually uh, getting close to an end, <laughs> as fast as that went. So uh, I did want to do a few, uh, few minutes here uh, if anybody has any questions, and then uh, if not, I can actually uh, kind of take it offline. So if you wanted to. What else can I see besides applications? Ah, good question. Um, you're right. We, there, there's so much more that uh, we didn't see. Um, one of the other, uh, well, a couple of things. One is uh, certainly as an operator, if you're dealing with um, constant issues with uh, getting low on uh, quota space in your org and space, and org and space in general, um, you can actually look at aggregated stats from an org and space perspective. So in this particular case, we can see that uh, we have uh, four orgs, and at least in the top org here, that we are dangerously low on our memory quota, hence why it's red. Um, it's red when it gets to 90%, it's yellow if it's at 80% or higher, and then uh, it's not colored uh, specifically uh, if it's below that. Um, and then again, you can drive down, so this is an o uh, ECS org, so if I press enter on there, it'll tell you the spaces and if there's any particular space quota, and again, colorization there. Um, the other thing that is extremely helpful from a debugging perspective is the cell list, which again, all of the information I'm showing you here is, is available without CFTOP. I mean, CFTOP's not doing anything special here. It's just aggregating all the data that's already available to you in a nice humanly consumable format. So you can do the forensics and figure this out. 
as in, in this case, um, figuring out how many containers are currently running on the, uh, the, the cell number 66 um, with IP address.66. Um, but it's sure nice to actually look at here and say, well, there's 37. Um, and how many CPUs it has, and, um, and going back to debugging uh, use case is that, is there any cells that are overloaded? And if so, which one? And of course, the next question is, all right, I can see one of my cells is overloaded, meaning overloaded from a CPU perspective. It's at, you know, say, 400%. Again, we have four CPUs, so we we'll go to 400%. You're know, like, well, OK, but what's the offending application, or what container would be the more accurate way to say that? What's the offending container that's running on that thing that's causing that to happen? Well, you can drill down. So if I actually pick um, a particular cell, you press Enter, and this will show you now this is all of the application containers that are running on this particular cell. And uh, again, it's defaulted by CPU utilization. So at the very top of that list would immediately show you what application is the offending application that's causing that cell to be highly consumed. So say again? OK, fair enough. Um, so anybody got a one minute question? <laughs> Go ahead. Carve out multi tenancy within different networking segments within there. Um, can you actually see the um, what Diego cells are members of, of which? Um, let me get that term for you, man. I'm sorry. Thank you. Can you actually tell which? Oh, yeah, you were in there too. Can you tell which uh, Diego cells are in which isolation segments from here? Because they were mentioning in the initial version of that they weren't able to do it, so it's good to get like the IP address range, uh, the IP addresses for your Diego cells and kind of go through that process a bit? Yes. Um, yes, you can. Um, thank you. So, so the answer is yes um, at the moment, because they have not segmented the, uh, the uh, logger gator to actually segment the traffic. It's all in one, which is meant, they mentioned that in that talk. Um, because of that, then the answer is yes. This is an example uh, of now a different lab, different foundation, that has um, two isolation segments, uh, spoke A and spoke B, uh, as well as still it's also got a Windows guy. And so that actually is providing you stats across that whole piece. And so yeah, that is, information is available. Um, and um, then you can also actually see it when you're actually scrolling through this list as to what isolation segment each application is a member of. So, all right, thanks everybody. <laughs>